So IOHK is really happy to come along to BIP because we've got a network here, we've got friendships and we've got partnerships and it's a great way to meet people that are interested in what we do and hopefully might come and be part of what we do in the future. So our goal when we created this conference was to invite as many people from abroad as possible and provide them with great entertainment and good content and then make connections between Ukraine and other countries so we can really leverage the like, resources that we have in here and potential and talent and create new projects and new ideas. So actually I've been going to uh, Ukraine now for several years to attend a wonderful series of events called BIP. Uh, and I mostly go because I, I really enjoy Pavel and Lilia and they have a, a wonderful community, a wonderful following, and it's a great opportunity to network and meet people. But also I, I really like Ukraine. You know, it's a wonderful country and it's a country that is in crisis. There are capital controls, there is civil unrest, there's a, a lot of concerns here, yet it's a country that is yearning to innovate and evolve. There's a lot of financial innovation going on right now in the banking sector. There's a strong desire to integrate blockchain technology into uh, the existing system. And there's also a lot of anti-corruption measures that could definitely benefit from if only they can get that initiative uh, furthermore, Ukraine has a long legacy similar to Poland uh, as an outsource culture where there's tons of great developers here, there's tons of great researchers here. IOHK actually has um, a whole research team, it's called Team Veritas, led by Professor Roman Olenikov and his students. So it's good to synchronize with them and see what they're working on and also what are the latest trends in the industry. BIF is a great opportunity to meet people from more than 20 different countries, from different backgrounds, whether they're researchers, academics or entrepreneurs or even just people who are interested in the industry and want to find out more about it. What we try to do is again to um, build bridges and educate people uh, because besides uh, technical talent you have to have um, like commercial talent, management talent, and yeah, just strategy. We do have a great relationship with distributed labs. We also have uh, several academic relationships, and uh, there's a lot of affiliate companies that we tend to talk to, and they give us a real good sense of what Eastern Europe as a whole is thinking about with cryptocurrency. Some of the largest mining pools are actually located in this geography, and some of the most ambitious and interesting projects are basing their dev centers in this area. So it's strategically a good idea to, to visit on a regular basis to Ukraine. Furthermore, uh, as I mentioned before, the Ukrainian government is actually very keen to do things in the blockchain space. So we look at this as kind of like a petri dish for innovation, uh, where we're gonna, by watching what they do here and enact here, uh, get a, a great template or model or great evidence of what could later be applied to larger jurisdictions like for example England or the United States. Ukraine positioned quite interesting because there is no regulation and historically the regulation about financial services is quite weak and people just do what they want and um, because of this and also because we have many developers who had good education in like mathematics and cryptography and they were interested in Bitcoin and um, the many startups are originated from Ukraine and many companies that are huge right now have Ukrainian roots. People are trying to experiment, they're not afraid and they, there, is, there are resources to do that, so developers. It's hard to say where the world ought to go but when you have a situation where money is not working well, trust is not working well, society has some issue, whether that be corruption or uh, violence, whatever it might be, to have tools at your disposal that could ameliorate the situation, change the situation for the good, for the better, uh, and to have a blank slate upon which you can implement these things is a very powerful concept. So what would be an ideal outcome for Ukraine is the same for any nation state for uh, it to be peaceful, for uh, employment rates to be reasonable, for people to make great money, uh, for people to be able to save and uh, actually have a good future, uh, and for people to uh, be able to be free to innovate and free to actually uh, live the fruits of their labors. So my hope is that the technology that we work on and our partners and in some cases uh, acquaintances in these jurisdictions uh, will have the freedom to try. And uh, from that freedom to try, we'll be able to extrapolate, see what was good, what was bad, 
uh, and it'll give us a lot of insight into what we need to inevitably do for other places who are worse off than Ukraine.